want to do that too many times. Happy New Year, everybody. I cannot believe it's already 2023 and that it's been over a month since we have worked on this car and shot anything with it. In the previous videos, we went to Georgia, picked this car up sight unseen, partially parted out, kind of clumped all the parts together, threw them in there, booked it down to Euro tuning down in Tampa, put it together to make it run and drive, kind of SEMA ready, if you will. And then we hauled it back here to Ohio and it sat for a month. Our original goal was to get this running and driving in the last video, which we did, but that's quite a bit different than driving the thing a thousand miles, which is what we have to do in eight days. So that's the goal to take this back to Euro tuning for their grand ish opening. Like I said, it's running and driving, but it's a bit of a basket case right now. I'm a little overwhelmed and it's just, it's just got a lot. We wouldn't even have got this far without some huge help from our friends at Euro tuning who also hooked us up with solo works for some suspension, which part is still laying here in the passenger seat, as well as Koenig wheels, which hooked us up with this sick set of bronze wheels. I've always wanted bronze wheels. These are their heliograms in matte bronze. I love these things. They're 18, so we still have some meat on the tire. Got it wrapped in a set of Indy 500s as well, as we always do. But I think the key here is to keep our eyes on the prize. Now we got this thing for an absolute steal, and there are a lot of really nice parts on this car. Some of which still need to grow on me, like these carbon fiber fenders here. But I think what I want to do to keep my mind fresh and organized, and since this thing sat for a while, the first thing we're going to do is just clean this thing completely out. There's just so much junk piled in this car. So what I want to do is get the entire interior gutted back out of this, vacuum it out really well, put the various interior pieces back in place, get our taillights installed in the car. We got a set of VLANs for this and get this thing hopefully thrown together enough I can drive it reliably because I'd like to drive it back and forth to work at least a couple times. I'd like to have at least a couple hundred on it. So that's it. I guess we'll get started. As you dig into a car like this, you start discovering things and wondering things like, man, I wonder what kind of sub he had in this car, what kind of system. Pretty sure he loved Airsoft because of all the BBs that are in here. And you're just thinking here and you're just looking up. <coughs> uh, all that foam branding down is because my headliner needs replaced. <coughs> oh. the beautiful E30. Derek would be so mad. Okay, I almost have the interior wrapped up and I was just about to stop because I have these new taillights, but I did not have the hardware I needed. Literally as I'm about to stop, our local Volkswagen dealership stops in with the parts I need. So we're gonna continue with that. And I wanna show you guys these V-Land taillights. They're pretty cheap, but they look so good. And they mimic the European spec taillight. So that looks awesome. And they're sequential. So when you turn your turn signal on, the turn signal moves across like so. But even cooler than that, your inboard is tied together with that. So the turn signal starts here, amber, and goes all the way across in a nice, like, smooth fashion. I can probably throw that up on the screen there. The only thing that's kind of tough about that is you have to connect 
your tail light in the hatch to your tail light in the body. And to do that, you have to run wiring down the hatch through this little harness right here and then into that. And that way the lights can communicate with each other and they know when to run that sequential turn signal. If you don't care about the sequential thing, it doesn't matter. It won't affect anything. It'll just do it on the outside one. So I'm going to throw these in. That'll seal the body in. And then I can get this thing outside and give it a wash because it is nasty. And the poor thing has just been sitting. It's got sand everywhere, dust, dirt all over it. We're going to get her cleaned up and it's going to make a heck of a difference and re-motivate me to keep on going. Once things are organized and clean, man, you can just... Just keep on going. Let's get these taillights in. Okay, before I button all the interior up, we'll do a little test here. Already looks really nice, but I wanna show you those sequential lights. Oh, that looks so good. So it just continues all the way across and then we'll get some running lights going. Just looks so good like that with the, just a lot more aggressive. These factory tail lights are kind of dull looking, kind of, I don't know, just immature, I guess is a good word for them. But these ones really kind of steps it up to maybe like a Mark 6.5 for those of you who do the facelift stuff. <laughs> I'm kind of in a unique predicament. This car is filthy, but these wheels are brand new and perfect. So by washing the car, I'm going to make the wheels dirtier than they are now. What a day to be washing a car. First bath and who knows how long. Really not sure why I just sprayed that wheel off. Should have put some bags over the wheels, some trash bags. That probably would have been a smart idea. That's what a smart person would have done. Oh, it is gritty. It's like sandpaper. You can feel it resisting the rag. If my buddy Todd at Esoterics watching this, he's probably just, just crawling in his skin right now. This thing is just nasty. My hands are already numb. Dude, it's so nasty. It's not even all coming off, really. It feels like sandpaper. It might need to just be rewrapped. Oh, dude, the top of this car. Hello. Thank you. First compliment on the uh, golf car. That lady walking by just said she likes this car. She knows nothing about it, that's why. If, uh, if you're into wrapping cars and you wanna, wanna help us out and work with us, shoot me a little email, message me below. I'm gonna bring you over here so you can see how bad this is. Hopefully that gives you an idea how bad this thing is. Oh, towel sticking. My hands are 50% numb now. Not nearly as bad as the other day when it was negative 30 though. My gosh, that was really cold. You guys wanna see a golf R and negative 30 wind chill, broke down, having issues. Check out the video. Oh, getting a phone call. Not gonna answer that right now. Oh man, that hood is horrible. I mean horrible. Probably, probably in the 65% range for hand numbness right now. Oh no, it is so filthy. That is just ridiculous. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. Eat. Okay. That, this is not coming off. Oh, so dirty. It's just like Matt was saying earlier, like it has a matte finish, so maybe it's like grabby, holds on to stuff. Oh dude, it's so gross. I know I've said that like 50 times by now, but I've got to convey it to you guys somehow when you can feel your paint, not good. I also wish I could find some lenses for these headlights, these are rough. It does not even look like I washed it. Well, I think that's gonna have to do it for this round of washing. Woo! All right. I know it looks like I still didn't clean it, but that's it. That's gonna wrap things up for today. That was a lot of work, trying to track down all the missing parts and put the interior together and, anyways. Wrapping up today, I'll pick it up with you tomorrow like that. Oh. Sometimes I snap too hard and instead of jumping forward one day, I jump forward like four days. So it is not Friday, it's now Tuesday. A lot has happened since Thursday. And this car kind of being a basket case, you just kind of jump in and find something, find something else, find something else, find something else, something else. 
and now your list just kind of keeps growing but we are knocking items out too and we've made a lot of progress since thursday let me take you through my handy little list i have here for a rundown so friday i come in i get the o-ring installed and the lower charge pipe that was a big vacuum leak and it's kind of a problem area on factory vehicles as well just that o-ring and that fitting is just kind of loose i know i had a big vacuum and boost leak there it would pop off anytime you made any boost car would run extremely poorly after that then I had that problem where the uh, throttle pipe coming up the front was really wedged against the radiator fan. So I would uh, say I massaged that and got that kind of wedged into a, an oval shape, really narrowed it down. And between that and getting this up on the lift and kind of sneaking my intercooler mounts in that helped bring the whole intercooler radiator assembly forward and got it away from that charge pipe. And now we have room between the fans and the charge pipe. So in this case, instead of pulling the whole core support out and getting that stack kind of out at separate, I just kind of finagled them in there. But it did take me a while. Had to use some uh, PB Blaster, maybe, maybe cut the lower bushing, split it to get it in there around. But got it in there, everything's mounted up. So now I don't have to worry about any chafing or uh, rubbing a hole through the intercooler. After all that, the car still is not running right and it's so discouraging you, you're running up on a deadline you got to get this car going you got this huge trip ahead of you it's not working out so anyways my buddy Derek comes over he's the guy that has the uh, GMW's the uh, GM powertrain swapped one series and E30 that's in our shop both very clean cars go check out his YouTube channel by the way I'll throw that somewhere up here but he kind of helps me with some diag and unfortunately we don't have access to wiring diagrams right now so thankfully we've got the cheap R to reference so we kind of have it next to this car and we're doing references. And the code I've got is a P0237, which is map signal low. So we kind of dig into the wiring. And after struggling with it for a while, we find that there's no five volt supply to that sensor. So thankfully on this car, the intake manifold runners, that's all deleted with this new aftermarket intake. For a test, I was able to back probe the harness for uh, the intake there get five volts, run it down, and supply my map sensor. And right now I have it all kind of just jankily back probed, but it's working. So now the car can drive well. I take it home, and if you'll remember from our last video on this car, the right rear knuckle was pretty screwed up. The bolt for the, the lower shock mount was no longer a hole, but a massive oval. It was wallered out, no chance of getting a bolt in there. So I look up a time circuit, I literally could get a used knuckle cheaper than a time cert. So went ahead and got a used knuckle, threw that in at my house, got that all mounted up, got the shock in, kind of tweaked and did a few things. There's just a whole bunch of, I mean, this car was parted out and the, the further I look into everything, the further you can tell it's been kind of messed with everywhere. <laughs> there's things loose, there's things that aren't lined up, there's things that aren't tight. So you're kind of just going through and nutting and bolting everything, but we still have a list of things we need to do. Oh, and through all this, I found the harness for the passenger seat. So I threw that in. Now I've got recline and heated seat in the passenger side. As of right now, car is running and driving really nice. Really nice for, for a project like this. I am thrilled that it's come this far. So we still have some big hurdles ahead, but I think we're gonna be good for our drive on Friday. That being said, we still do have quite the list of things to address. And I'll go over those now, as soon as I find my other list. Okay, got my other list now. You know the saying, short pencil, long memory. In this case, it's a, a pen, so I don't know if that'd just be like low on ink or... Here's our list. I've gotta lower the front end a little bit. We're, we're kind of monster truck. I wanna, I wanna have a little rake into it. Get it aligned. I need to adjust these carbon fiber fenders because they're kind of, their fitment's really wacky, but I think we can tweak that in. I need to swap the front brake pads. These things, it has some kind of like really aggressive track pads in it. And it is, it is painful. Derek said that the front pads were harmonizing with each other. They hit this frequency that is literally painful. It's ridiculous. I need to get some vinyl on this car. Um, we do have some great sponsors, Koenig Wheels, Solo Works, Unitronic. And last but not least, Euro Tuning, who helped put this whole thing together. So I wanna get them on the car, show them some love. This afternoon, our buddies, Mo and Kobe, over at Exclusive Customs, are gonna throw some 20% tint all the way around. I need to do an oil change. I've got the Liquid Molly kit from Euro Tuning still. The previous owner did tell me that he thought the turbo was consuming some oil. 
I think it's a seal in the turbo. If this thing sits in idles hot for a little bit, it becomes a smoke machine. It's pretty bad. But that, that's the life you get with a, with a big turbo car, I guess. I am missing a CV axle bolt, uh, one of the small ones on the transmission side. I've got that. i got to put it in. Glue up little edges of the headliner. I want to eventually replace this headliner. I'm out of time. I'm not going to be able to do that, but I do want to keep it from chafing little pieces of foam all into my respiratory system. I want to get my radio installed. I've got a little, uh, not CB, but like a little two-way radio thing I want to put in so we can talk on the way down. That is going to bring us to our next problem, which you'll see here shortly. This car is a big turbo car. Uh, I'll put the size down below. I, I don't even remember the size off the top of my head, but whatever custom tune is in this, something's not working right to where it has an internal wastegate with an N75 valve. Nothing's happening. So first time we get in this car, Derek and I take it for a cruise. You get in it and I am like, holy cow, this thing is so fast. Look down and it's making literally 42 PSI boost. So <laughs> on, a, on a stock motor, that's not gonna last too long. You're gonna lift the head or we're gonna make all of our rods rainbow shaped. So we've gotta get that under control. You'll see here shortly what's going on there. But I ended up ordering a simple manual boost controller for that. We're gonna run that in parallel with the N75 valve. I don't even know if the N75 valve is functioning or not. We don't have any codes for it. But again, I don't have the tuning software for the custom tuning. And my goal is to kind of just start all over after this trip or maybe after Wookiees and then start fresh with products and tuning all from the same company and just kind of know what's going on instead of dealing with a bunch of custom stuff with somebody I've never worked with before. And I'm kind of not educated in that area anyway, so I have a lot of learning to do. But we're, like I said, we're gonna run that manual boost controller and just kind of get control of at least limit the upper level of boost and we should be good to go other than the oil consumption and my ears bleeding from these brake pads it's doing really well so let's run through getting all this stuff done and hopefully next time you see this it has a set of shades on and we're no longer in the fishbowl effect it's a big list i made some decent progress on the car it's uh, about 12 30 but i mentioned before that this big turbo is having some boost control issues and i want to give you an idea of what i mean and so for reference, the Cheap R is a stage two car, Unitronic, it makes like 19 PSI around, around there. Watch what happens with this car. Yeah, I don't wanna do that too many times, but I just wanna give you guys a taste of what's going on. So this car is so fast, and I mean, it will make higher boost than that in low end, I mean, we were seeing low to mid 40s before I get out of it, just at the beginning, just bam, oh, get out of it, don't wanna bend a rod. So we definitely need to get that under control and tomorrow my manual boost controller is supposed to show up. So we'll get that all plumbed in, get that boost kind of tamed down. All right, let's get over to exclusive customs and get rid of these perfectly clear windows. I hate the fishbowl effect. As usual, Mo and Kobe knocked it out of the park. Always love getting the cars tinted. Uh, just really changes the car, cleans things up. I like looking at that, not being able to see inside. You get a little security, it cuts down heat in the summer. All that, it's wrapped up and running pretty well. Our, our main last things have to do with the turbo. We've got that boost control issue we're gonna get figured out. If it sits for a long time, quite a bit of smoke coming out of the back. So we're gonna work on that, but neither of those are gonna prevent us from being able to drive to Florida. Just gotta keep an eye on that, keep an eye on the oil level. I'm itching to get this thing on the road. I've got about 350 miles on it right now, but we're gonna put 2200-ish, something like that, uh, here in the next couple days. So we'll see if we make it. Keep an eye out for that next video coming up. Tell us what you think about the old, uh, I don't even know. I, we don't even have a name. I just, I just said cheaper because it's cheaper in the red car so far. So give me a name, give me a name for this thing. Let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. It's kind of like I'm playing Hungry Hungry Hippos on campaign mode.